Welcome to this tutorial on combining reinforcement learning with a Bayesian EcoState Network Policy Gradient. Let's break this down step by step. First, in reinforcement learning, or RL, we have an agent that learns to make decisions by interacting with an environment. Think of a robot learning to walk, or a program learning to play a video game. The agent observes the state of the environment, selects an action, and receives a reward based on the outcome. Over time, it aims to maximize its cumulative reward by learning which actions are most beneficial in different situations. Now, traditional RL algorithms often use deep neural networks to represent the agent's policy, especially for environments where the state is complex or involves sequences over time, but training these networks, particularly recurrent neural networks, can be computationally demanding and may require a lot of data to generalize well. This is where the EcoState Network, or ESN, comes in. The ESN is a special kind of recurrent neural network, but with a twist. Instead of training all the network weights, only the final output layer, called the readout, is trained. The rest of the network, called the reservoir, is a large, randomly initialized, and sparsely connected set of neurons. When you input a signal, the reservoir generates a rich, nonlinear echo of your input over time. Because only the readout layer is trained, ESNs are extremely efficient and can capture complex temporal dependencies without the heavy computational cost of traditional RNNs. However, a challenge remains. How do we ensure that our agent not only learns, but also knows when it is uncertain about its decisions? This is important, especially in real-world scenarios where making mistakes can be costly or dangerous. To address this, we make the ESN Bayesian by introducing dropout at the readout layer, not just during training, but also during inference. This means that every time our agent needs to make a decision, it passes the state through the ESN multiple times, each time randomly dropping different connections in the readout, the output is averaged across these passes, which not only makes the policy more robust, but also gives us a measure of uncertainty in the agent's actions. This technique, sometimes called Monte Carlo dropout, helps the agent explore more intelligently and avoid overconfident, risky decisions. In the training process, we use the policy gradient method, specifically the reinforce algorithm. Here, the agent samples actions based on the policy's output, collects rewards, and then updates its policy to increase the likelihood of actions that led to higher rewards. By using the Bayesian ESN as the policy network, our agent can both learn from the environment efficiently and handle uncertainty naturally. By combining the strengths of reinforcement learning, the efficiency and temporal modeling of echo-state networks, and the uncertainty awareness of Bayesian inference, we create a system that is both powerful and practical. This approach enables agents to learn faster, make safer decisions, and generalize better, even in environments where data is limited or uncertainty is high. In the next part of this tutorial, We'll walk through the implementation step by step so you can see exactly how to build and train a Bayesian echo state network policy gradient agent for your own projects. If you'd like to experiment with this yourself, the source code for this project is publicly available on our GitHub. You can find the link in the description of this video. We encourage you to explore, run the code, and try extending the ideas to your own environments. In this part of code, we're looking at two foundational utility functions that support the integrity and robustness of our reinforcement learning experiments. The first function, setSeed, is all about reproducibility. By setting the random seeds for both NumP and PyTorch, and configuring the backend to behave deterministically, we ensure that our experiments are repeatable. This means that if you or someone else runs the code with the same seed, you'll get exactly the same results, even when running on different hardware or with GPU acceleration. This is a key practice in both research and production, where understanding and verifying results is crucial. The second function, 
Reset or ENV addresses an important compatibility concern with the OpenAI Jim library. Over time, Jim has updated how its environments are reset, changing the format of what's returned. Our reset Darch ENV function checks for these differences and handles them automatically. So our main code stays clean and compatible with both old and new versions of Jim. It also supports seeding, further enhancing the reproducibility of our experiments. Together, these utility functions make our reinforcement learning code more robust, maintainable, and reliable, ensuring that our results are both trustworthy and easy to share or extend in future projects. Let's take a deep dive into our EchoState network implementation with a Bayesian readout and see why this architecture is so valuable in reinforcement learning tasks. We start with the Bayesian readout class. This layer is simple in structure but powerful in effect. It consists of a fully connected linear layer which transforms the reservoir's output into the final output space, such as action scores for our agent. But what really sets it apart is the dropout layer that follows. By enabling dropout during both training and inference, we turn our deterministic neural network into a Bayesian estimator. Each forward pass will drop a random set of connections in the readout, meaning every prediction is slightly different. This property lets us sample from an approximate distribution of possible outputs for a given input, rather than producing a single, possibly overconfident answer. In practical terms, this helps our agent understand when it's uncertain about the best action, allowing it to explore more wisely. Now, let's talk about the main event, the Echo State Network class. The ESN is inspired by biological brains, which are made up of vast networks of sparsely connected neurons. In our implementation, we replicate this idea by creating a reservoir, a large pool of randomly connected units. The connection weights are set at initialization and not updated during learning. To make this reservoir useful, we carefully control its properties. First, the W in matrix connects the input to the reservoir. It's randomly initialized and scaled to ensure inputs are distributed widely across the reservoir units providing a rich set of responses to every new input. Next, the W matrix sets up the reservoir's internal connections. These are also random and sparse, meaning each neuron only connects to a small fraction of the others. Before we use this matrix, we adjust its spectral radius, the largest absolute value among its eigenvalues. This is a critical step. Setting the spectral radius properly makes sure the reservoir's activity is neither too explosive nor too forgetful, so it can maintain meaningful echoes of past inputs for the agent to learn from. The network also keeps track of its own internal state. Every time it receives a new input, it updates this state using a leaky integration formula. This formula is important because it balances the influence of new information with the memory of previous states. The leaky rate hyperparameter controls this trade-off, allowing you to tune the ESN's memory for the task at hand. After each update, we normalize the state vector to keep the system numerically stable and avoid issues like exploding or vanishing activations. What makes the ESN unique is that, after this complex and dynamic transformation, only the output layer is trained. The vast majority of the network, the reservoir, remains fixed. This design means the ESN can model temporal relationships in data with much less computational effort compared to fully trained recurrent neural networks. In the forward pass, all of this comes together. An input is projected into the reservoir, the internal state is updated and normalized, and the resulting state is passed through the Bayesian readout layer. When we use this model in reinforcement learning, we often make several forward passes for the same input, each with different dropout masks. By averaging these outputs, we get not just a prediction, but also a sense of how confident the model is. 
crucial for agents that need to balance exploration and exploitation. Altogether, this echo-state network with Bayesian readout gives us a lightweight, powerful, and uncertainty-aware foundation for reinforcement learning agents, especially in environments with sequential structure and uncertain outcomes. This combination allows our agent to efficiently learn from experience, model temporal patterns, and make safer, more informed decisions. Now let's look at how we connect our echo state network to action selection through the policy network. The policy network class acts as the interface between the rich, dynamic representations produced by the ESN and the action space of the environment. When the agent receives a new observation, this policy network passes it through the ESN to capture both the current state and its temporal context. The ESN's output, known as low JITs, represents the network's unnormalized confidence for each action. We then apply a softmax function to these logits, which converts them into a proper probability distribution. This means each possible action is assigned a probability based on the agent's understanding of the environment at that moment. With this setup, the agent can sample actions according to these probabilities, naturally balancing exploration and exploitation, a key principle in reinforcement learning. In summary, the policy network wraps the ESN's temporal modeling power in a simple, reliable action selection layer, forming the heart of our agent's decision-making process. In this part of the project, we're bringing everything together with our main training script for the Bayesian Echo State Network Policy Gradient Agent. The script starts by ensuring compatibility across different gym versions and imports all the modules we need. We begin training by setting a random seed, which guarantees that each run is repeatable and reliable. The cart pole environment is created and the ESN-based policy network is initialized on the right device, whether that's a GPU or your local CPU. The core of the script is the training loop. For each episode, we reset the environment and step through it using our policy. Here's where the Bayesian element comes in. At each time step, the policy network runs several stochastic forward passes with dropout active and we average the resulting action probabilities. This gives our agent a sense of uncertainty about its actions, making its exploration more robust and less likely to overfit or get stuck. After collecting all the rewards for an episode, the script computes the discounted return for each time step, normalizes these returns, and uses them to perform a policy gradient update. This process teaches the agent to favor actions that lead to higher cumulative rewards. Every 10 episodes, the script prints out the agent's total reward so we can monitor its learning progress. Altogether, this training script showcases how modern reinforcement learning practices like Bayesian uncertainty estimation, reproducible experiments, and robust policy optimization can be combined to create a powerful learning agent for sequential decision-making tasks like cart pole. That brings us to the end of our journey with reinforcement learning using a Bayesian echo state network policy gradient agent on the cart pole environment. Through this tutorial, we explored how to build reproducible experiments, leverage the power of echo state networks for temporal sequence modeling, and incorporate Bayesian uncertainty into our action selection for safer and smarter exploration. We walked step by step through the core utilities, the ESN architecture, the Bayesian policy network, and the complete training loop, showing not just how each piece works, but why these choices matter in practice. The end result is a modular, efficient, and uncertainty-aware reinforcement learning agent that you can use as a foundation for your own experiments and project. If you found this video tutorial helpful, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more deep learning and reinforcement learning content. And remember, the full source code is publicly available on our GitHub. The link is in the video description. Thanks for watching and happy experimenting.